Hi, this is Paul from finishyoursong.com and this is the first of a two-part video looking at setting your monitoring levels. But I thought before we get too far into that, it might be useful to just pop out into the real world for a minute so that I could share with you the very modest setup that I have at home. Now, you'll notice as we go through this video that it's a far from ideal setup, but like most people, I don't have a large room that I can devote exclusively to being a studio. If I was to show you what's behind the camera, you'd see a rack full of guitars and a room full of clutter, bookcases, and various bits and pieces that get thrown in here from time to time when my wife decides that's where they ought to go. So I'm very lucky to have a room uh, that I can call my own. Um, the kids even refer to it as the study. Um, and I know for some people that's not an achievable thing. For other people, it's like I'm the poor relation. But I'm quite happy with what I've got. So as I go through this video and the ones that I'm going to make over the next couple of weeks, I'm talking from experience, I'm talking about a real world setup, and I'm showing you how I try to do the best I can to get the best results that I can. Now, when I'm in here, because it's a domestic setup, um, some of the time I can't have the music on. If I'm working late at night, I'm right next door to my son's bedroom and he likes to get some sleep and the rest of the house don't particularly like some of the music that I mix. So I'm left trying to sort out um, the best that I can. So what I use is headphones and uh, I have three pairs of headphones that I mix on when I'm mixing at night. I never finalise a mix on headphones, but I can get pretty close. I'll just um, pull them up. So the first pair of headphones, and the main pair of headphones I use for mixing and recording are a pair of KRK 8400s. They, they aren't wireless, despite the fact this has no trailing cable. The cable actually detaches, it plugs in there. Um, they're reference monitors, they're closed back monitors, which means that when I put them over my ears, they pretty much act as a pair of ear defenders. The world goes a lot quieter background hum in this room disappears. The problem with that is if you use them for any length of time they will start to hurt your ears no matter what level you mix at and I'll come back to the level you mix at in a minute. So my alternate pair of speakers oops, are these. These are a pair of Sennheiser HD 515s. They're a domestic um, pair of headphones Got a really nice mid-range, the treble's a bit thin, and the bottom end tends to be a little bit indistinct. But they're really quite comfortable, and they're open-backed, and the sound can come out of here. So for tracking vocals, they're not much use, because you get a lot of spill into the microphone. But for long-term mixing, they're quite comfortable. And when you put them on, you don't really notice a reduction in the background sound. The third pair of headphones I have, that I don't use very much, but they are useful for their own ends are this pair of older Panasonic headphones. These are real hi-fi cheapy headphones and I've had them for years. Again very comfortable, foam backed, despite the fact they've got a solid shell they've got vents there, the foam on the earpieces. So they have a very trebly sound, they have very little bass so they're really good for working out if your sound's getting a bit too trebly. And as to why that might well, that's down to things called the fletcher munson curve and the Haas effect, and we'll come back to that. Right, so those are the headphones that I use. Now, let's have a look at the monitoring. This is the monitoring setup. Um, I started out, I've had for years, this pair of Cambridge Soundworks speakers. They're really nice, but they don't give you the bass that you would want. Um, they give a fairly full sound, but they're not really representative. As things start to get below the low E on a normal guitar, things start to tail off. So I have these two BX5 from M Audio, and I bought them because they're appropriate to the size of the room. In an edition of Sound on Sound this year, there was a table that showed you your optimum volume level for mixing at if you took into account the volume of your room. Um, now, for a, a room of under 42 square metres, it was reckoning 
that around 74 decibels was the optimum. Now 74 decibels in this room, which is a shade under 20 cubic metres, is pretty, uh, pretty loud. So I have set my reference level at 70 decibels. So the big thing about this setup is that my speakers are sat on these Auralex mopads. Now, when I bought them, they came highly recommended by loads of people on different websites. And I thought £33, which is roughly what I paid for them, £33 for what is effectively a lump of foam was an awful lot of money. However, I was pleased with the immediate improvement in the sound. Taking these off the desk and putting them on the mopads really did improve the sound. The, the amount of bass that I suddenly acquired, the precision, the clarity uh, that was acquired, it was like I'd taken a veil off the speakers. So although it's a lot of money, I would recommend that you think about getting some for yourself. Now, I'm going to finish off this video just by having a look at how I positioned the speakers. OK, so positioning the speakers is something you're going to have to read the manual for. Um, some speakers, I know, actually require to be faced outwards. These BX5s very definitely need to point inwards to your listening position. And they, can, they have a dinky blue light on the front. And when the blue light is at its maximum, you are seeing them straight on your perpendicular to the cone which is what you want in terms of setting up where they are on the desk it isn't as random as it may look you take your trusty tape measure sit yourself in your preferred monitoring position and you measure the distance now you, theoretically you're measuring the distance to your ears Working off the principle that your ears are equally distant from the middle of your body, I actually measure the distance into my sternum, my chest bone, because that's in the middle of my body and therefore all should be well. So when I look over there, I'm just a shade over 90 centimetres away from the speaker. I go there, I'm a shade over 90 centimetres away from the speaker. And when I measure the speakers, lo and behold, they're a shade under 90 centimetres apart. Now, you don't have to have an equilateral triangle, but it helps if the distance from where you sit to each of your ears is the same. That way, you know you're getting a balanced sound. In the next video, I'll look at how you make sure that what is coming out of the speakers is a balanced sound. And to do that, I'll show you how you can make use of your mobile phone or your cell phone, as they say, in certain parts. So until then, you take care of yourself.